So today we will be studying about level curves and level sets. These, this is a very important topic in mathematics as well as uh, has applications in economics and in fact in today's video only we will find out that it has a varied sort of application in other subjects from uh, maths or uh, economics and it can be to some extent applied to subjects like geography as well. So let's find out what are level curves or level sets. So let's look at the formal definition first. So what are level curves or what are level sets? In mathematics, a level set of a real valued function f of n variables is a set of the form that is a set where the function takes on a given constant value c. When the number of variables is 2, a level set is generally called a curve, which is a level curve a contour line or an iso line. Seems confusing? Well, probably it is because it's in mathematical languages. What we'll do is we will come back to this definition later, but at first we will look at an illustration and in fact we'll take help of a very different subject that we have discussed till now. So uh, up until now, we have only discussed on subjects of mathematics and economics, but in today, to understand level curves or level sales, we'll take the help of a neighboring subject of geography. So let's look at an example. The following picture that you can see is the picture of, what do you think it is? It's a mountain. But what is this mountain? This mountain is essentially a, a very famous mountain in Japan, and it's called Mount Fuji. So, uh, as you can see in the picture, there are certain lines drawn over the mountain. So, what do these signify? You see, if I uh, look at uh, Mount Fuji, its height is 3,776 meter. Now, what do I uh, get if all of a sudden I take the mountain and uh, I have a very big axe and what I do is at a height of 2000 meter so that's not like the mountain is of a height of 3776 meter what i do is at a height of 2000 meter from sea level i chop off the rest of the mountain so what you see is this line that you see what i do is i chop off this section of the mountain so i'll get a flat plateau of form now, instead of doing it at a height of 2,000 meter from sea level, I can do it at a height of 2,250 and I'll get a higher plateau of sorts where this rest of the mountain, the essence, the essence of the mountain itself, the, the, peaked, the peaked top, that vanishes because I've chopped it off. I can do that from a height of 2,500. I can do that from a height of 2750 and I can do it at various heights. So what I'm essentially doing is I am taking this entire mountain and what I'm doing is at different heights I'm chopping off the mountain. One thing you know is at every height if I chop off the mountain the top the border of its top of the plateau that we'll get I am marking them by this red jagged line because you see since it's a mountain it won't have a smooth surface it won't it won't have a smooth top it'll have jagged and ragged and ridge, ridges and edges so that is what this line signifies this line signifies the top the border of its top plateau so that is what this line signifies as you see every line has a particular height that is associated with it so at this height if i cut the mountain at a height of 2000 meters from sea level i will get this border of the top so i won't have the rest of the mountain i'll have a plateau whose top is bordered by this red line similarly if i chop off the mountain at a height of 2250 meters from the sea level i will get another plateau whose border whose top will have a border shown by this red line that is marked by the number 2250 and so on and so forth with we'll have cases like uh, this for this line we'll have uh, chopped off the mountain at 2500 meters from sea level and for this line we have the mountain chopped off at a height of 2750 meters from sea level so what are the observations that you can see one observation that you can see is as I move higher up, my 
shape essentially the border of its top of the plateau that I'll get if I chop off the rest of the mountain, the shape changes. So if I cut it off, if I chop off the mountain at the lowermost uh, height that I have, so that's the lowest height, which is 2000 meter in my case, I will get the top which has uh, the biggest circumference of sorts. It's not exactly a circle, but uh, if I chopped it off, the plateau will have the widest area. If I go on and had a higher level of 2250 meters, the top that I'll have, that will have a smaller area. Again, if I move on a little higher, I'll have 2500 meters from sea level height and I'll get a smaller area. So this is how it can be arranged. The arrangements of these heights can be put forward through these lines. Now, this is one view of the map. What will I have if instead of this perspective, I look at the mountain from the top? So that's the bird's eye view that I'm talking about. So as I mentioned before, if I cut the mountain off at a height of 2000 meter, you see this, the outermost red line is what I get. So this entire portion will become a flat topped plateau. Similarly, we'll have another flat topped plateau. Of course, it'll have a smaller area if I look at a height of 2250 meter from sea level. And it'll go on with uh, increasing heights. So as I increase the height of my chop off point, the area of its plateau, the area of the, the top area that'll, in, that'll decrease in size, at least considering this mountain that I've taken. So why are we talking about geography? Let's come to the point. Why I was talking about geography is that these, these lines that I have, what, what, how can I express it in a different way? If I look at my longitudes and latitudes as some uh, independent variables, then I can take height as a dependent variable based on those longitudes and latitudes. So for a particular longitude and for a particular latitude, I have a particular height of the mountain or at least a particular height of the land surface at that point on the earth. So effectively, the height of the mountain is kind of like a function that shows the height of the land surface at that particular latitude and longitude. So in that case, my latitude and longitude turn out to be my sort of independent variables and the height of the land surface at that latitude and longitude kind of turn out to be the dependent variable. If I look at uh, my uh, scenario or if I look at my case from this perspective, what I can see is if I uh, look at the height as a function, then this area, this 2000 uh, part that I chopped off, at this area, if I chop off, the entire land surface will have a height of 2000 meter from sea level. So what I see is for this area, for these points essentially, these points that lie on this red outermost line, all these points are at a height of 2000 meter from sea level. Not the points inside the line, the points on this line. So this point, this point, this point, this point. All these points that lie on this red, jagged and rigid line, they all lie on a height at a height of 2000 meters from sea level. So what essentially happens is these points are at a particular value of height, where height, the function, of uh, rather the dependent variable where height is taken as the dependent variable and it is based on the latitude and longitude which are my independent variables. So what essentially happens is I am trying to map the values of my dependent variable. I am trying to find out the map of constant values that I have for my dependent variable at different values of my independent variable. So which are the points or which are the heights that I have at a height of 2000 meter for this area? So this latitude and longitude has a height of 2000 meter. This latitude and longitude has a height of 2000 meter. Uh, let's take a different point. This latitude and longitude has a height of 2000 meter. 
not none of the points which are out or not lying on this point. So say this point. This point is not on two thousand meter height. This point is not on two thousand meter height. This point is not on two thousand meter height. Only the points that lie on this red line are at a height of two thousand meter. Similarly, let's uh, test it ourselves. What do you think a point on this line? Let's say we take a random point here. What do you think will be the height of that point? What do you think? Well, if you guessed it to be uh, 2,250 meters from sea level, you're correct. Because that point will lie on this line, seg this, this uh, curved, again, rigid dot, not dotted, but a little half a shaped line, let's call it. So that line is marked by a height of 2,000 to, uh, 2,250 meters from sea level. So all the points which lie on this second most outer red line will have a height of 2,250 meters from sea level. So they all have a constant height, but they have varied latitudes and longitudes. So I am essentially mapping the combinations of latitudes and longitude, that is a combination, that is the positions on the earth that have this, not on earth, at least in this section of the map that I have, that are at a height of 2,250 meters from sea level. And we can say that for the other lines as well. 